Welcome this afternoon. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. The title of the message today is Walking in Your Identity as an Overcomer. So it's about being an overcomer, but also want to talk about identity. Now, identity has three important aspects that are going to be critical to this message today, and that's your personality, culture, and relationships. Personality, that's your voice. It's uh, the way you think. It's your attitude. Uh, it's uh, the words that you speak and how you speak them. Uh, that's personality, and that's a part of your identity. The second part is your culture. Where were you born? Where do you live? What do you do? And the third part is your relationships. Who are you related to? Who, who do you uh, pour into their life and who pours into your life? So those three are really important. Okay, so the core scripture today is 1 John 5, verse 4, that says, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Well, you might say, well, I'm born of God. But are you? Are you really? Who is born of God? You know, God is a spirit. Uh, John 4, verse 24 says, God is a spirit. And uh, then Hebrews 12, 9 says that he's the father of spirits. So the person born of the of God is your spirit man. It's not the natural man. It's the spirit man. The person who is the overcomer, see, is your spirit man. It's not your flesh. Your flesh is not the overcomer. The spirit man is the incredible, absolute, always overcomer, your spirit man. Now, let's go back to those three concepts I was talking about, your personality. Well, what's the personality of your spirit man? Your spirit man has the personality of Jesus. Hallelujah. He, he has the mind of Christ, the thinking like Christ, uh, and speaks the word of faith. So to be an overcomer, you have to have the mind of Christ. Uh, and that's the personality. That's your identity. You have to have the mind of Christ and think like him. And secondly, is culture. Well, where were you born? Well, no longer are you born in Honduras. No longer are you from uh, Roatan or La Ceiba. Now you are born from above. Ooh, Your overcomer spirit is born from above. And what is the culture? The culture is the kingdom. So this is really changing our mindset about what is an overcomer. And uh, then the third part is relationships. Well, what kind of relationships does your spirit have? Well, your spirit, there is a, the heavenly father, Jesus Christ, his son, and the Holy Spirit. They all abide within you, within your spirit. So the overcomer that you are is your spirit man. Now, that's where a lot of people miss it. They think they can overcome things with their natural abilities. But this verse, 1 John 5, 4, says, whoever is born of God, that means the spirit man overcomes, overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. So this is going to be a different kind of message today. This is one that we're going to have to look inside of us and at the spirit man within us, think about his attitude, think about his culture, and his culture is the kingdom culture, and his relationships with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they're all one. See, that's what we want. We want our spirit to be one with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And God has a priority. He has a number one priority for you, for your life. God wants to do something in your life. And this is what he wants you, what he wants to do in your life. This is his number one priority. It, it is not to make life easy for you on this earth. His number one priority on this uh, for you is to make you like Jesus. Ooh, amen. Glory to God. 
Now, now we're beginning to see what an overcomer is. An overcomer is someone who, who uh, understands what God is doing in their life and what God wants to do in their life. See, we're being changed from glory to glory, mm -hmm. but it's not the flesh. It's the spirit man. It's we're being strange. changed from glory to glory into the image of Jesus Christ. Uh, that's what uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 18 says, and Romans uh, 8, 29 says that we are predestined to be conformed mm -hmm. to the image of Jesus. Okay, so we're talking about overcoming today overcoming but we have to remember who it is that is overcoming in our life it's the spirit man and so we need to nurture uh, and feed the spirit man and release the spirit man and so that we can know the truth and the truth will set us free will set us free to what to be uh, who god made us to be and so we're being changed to be like Jesus. That's the whole idea behind it. Now, we will always face circumstances, but circumstances come with the possibility to upgrade your identity, to enrich your identity. Every time you've got a problem facing you, if you run to the Lord, you can change who you are and out of the increased and enriched uh, identity that you have, then you can step back into your uh, circumstance and change it. That's what an overcomer oh, is. An overcomer. Good, good, an good. overcomer is not somebody who's going to, uh, by the flesh, overcome problems. The overcomer runs into the Lord, keeps in mind that the Lord is within us. And see, 1 John 4, 4, says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so it, in the old testament we if we wanted to find god we would run to a temple or we would run to a priest or we'd run to a prophet but in the new testament if we want to run to god we look inside of us because that's where he is the spirit oh. is within us so this message is about the spirit working in you and through you, but it's also your connection and relationship with the father and the son. So they all three, you're one, be one with all of them. That's the way Jesus was. See, God is making you like Jesus. And we're all going to have to have some upgrades to be like Jesus. See, uh, in Philippians, Paul said, I haven't yet arrived. Now, Paul, oh man, look at what all he did. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He, he caused the lame to walk. Uh, a man fell out of a building one day and he went just down and raised him up, brought him back to life, uh, did incredible things, wrote uh, many, many uh, of the books of the New Testament. And he said, I have not arrived. But you know what God was doing with Paul? He was conforming him to the image of jesus christ step it's a step-by-step -step process and we're talking about overcoming overcoming problems every kind of problem so where do these problems how do we deal with the problems that's that's the real issue how do we deal with these problems well it says that we have no flesh no confidence in flesh so philippians 3 3 says we have no confidence in flesh but, but jo Joshua 1, 9 says, have I not commanded you to be strong and very courageous? So we have to have confidence. We have to be courageous. And uh, the, with the spirit, see, we, uh, the overcomer is confident, has mm -hmm. courage, has, uh, is uh, fully persuaded. Uh, glory to God. The overcomer is fully persuaded. And uh, 1 John 5, 14 says, this is the confidence that we have. If we ask the Father anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. That's confidence. Now, you, as an overcomer, you should have confidence that you can approach God, that you don't have to run to the temple. You don't have to run to a priest. You don't have to run to a prophet, but it's in you. 
because it says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So when you face a problem as an overcomer, you run to the spirit within you, the God within you. Greater is he that's within you than the problem that you're facing. How can we, how can we deal with things like that? If we've got to be attentive and sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And we've got to be at rest. See, if we're at rest, we can hear his voice. If, if we get anxious about things and about situations, then it's very hard for us to hear his voice. But if we come into rest, come into rest, we join ourselves with Jesus. You know, he said in Matthew 11, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest and uh, take my yoke upon you or join yourself to me and learn of me. So this is, this is where we're going to learn when we come into rest. He's going to teach us. You know, rest is a gift. Rest is a gift. I give you rest. But we can lose our rest, though. He says, come unto me and I will give you rest and you will learn of me. You learn how I operate. See? God's number one priority for you today and will be the same tomorrow is to make you more and not more like Jesus. Jesus. It's not to give you a, an easy life. It's not uh, about uh, giving you uh, lots of money. It's not about giving you land and servants. And it's not about all of that. It's making you like Jesus. So we have to think about Jesus. And what's going to make us like Jesus is only being close to the Lord, going into his presence. See, we, where does overcoming come from? It comes from abiding in the presence of the Lord. Oh, where does overcoming come from? Overcoming power comes from, it comes from the Holy Spirit. We have to abide in his presence. When we abide in his presence, then that's where we become an overcomer. We don't overcome by the flesh. And so any problem that comes up, uh, maybe we're not at the point where we know how to deal with it. Well, what do we do? Well, we run to the one that's within us. Mm -hmm. We be sensitive to his voice. We hear what he says to us, and then we'll be able to overcome it. And our personality will be, we'll think like Jesus, and we'll speak the words like Jesus. We'll have his attitude, and we'll change our situations and our circumstances. See, I like what Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32 says. He that can rule his spirit is better than a man who conquers a city. So what that says mm -hmm. is that if you can rule your spirit, you can rule your environment. If you can rule your spirit, you can rule your environment. Well, What's in your environment? Well, your problems and your situations and your circumstances, you can rule all of those if you just rule your spirit. You keep it at peace and at rest so that it hears the Lord and what the Lord is wanting to do mm -hmm. in your life. Overcomer, be an overcomer. Be an overcomer in everything that you face. Now, the most important thing and, and if it's the most important thing for God is to change you to be like Jesus, it is also the most important thing for you. Every time God gives you something, it will profit you. It will profit you mm -hmm. and it will change you. Now, God never gives you anything negative. God will only give you good things that will profit you and they will change you. And I want to give this example. This is an example that I've uh, spoken about many times is that uh, when we were young parents uh, and our, our daughter was born, the doctor said she was going to die. Well, we took her to this doctor and we took her to that doctor and then we took her back to this doctor and back and forth between the doctors. And finally, the result of all the doctors was she's going to die. Okay. And so we looked for help everywhere we could and found none except with the Lord. So we turned our attention to the Lord. And when we sought the Lord, see, we ran into the Lord. We looked into his word. We studied his word. And we found out about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
and he gave us the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when he gave us the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that was to profit us, and that and that changed us. It was good. The Holy Spirit and being filled with the Spirit was good, and it and it changed us. And we had to make so many changes in our life. Uh, another thing we changed what was the Lord wanted us to get away from all the people who were doubters and unbelievers and go someplace where they believed in healing and believed in God. And so we had to leave a lot of people behind. And we went to another congregation where they taught about healing and there were healings going on. Uh, but, but our daughter was not healed in a, in a service like that. Our daughter was healed in our home uh, when she it's was when she was screaming uh, because she was in pain and in, uh, had a high temperature and infection we laid her on the couch and, and we turned to the Lord Sherry and I got down on our knees and we uh, worshiped him now this is really interesting see we needed to overcome this pronouncement of death over her we needed to overcome that's a problem that's a big problem we waited 14 years for our daughter to be born and now the doctor said that she's going to die and so that's the problem we had to overcome and we couldn't overcome it in our flesh no doctor could overcome it we had to run to the lord and so we studied the word we found the scriptures about healing and we uh, so everything we got from the lord uh was profitable to us and it also changed us and that night in our living room we were on our on our knees and we were worshiping the lord and you know we didn't ask him to uh heal her at that moment maybe we'd ask him a thousand times before that but that night we didn't ask him because our faith had arisen See, we had changed mm. and, and we worshiped him because he had healed her mm, by, by his stripes. He had healed her 2000 years ago. He healed her, made her whole. And that was the night the miracle was manifested. Mm. You see that we had to change. Mm. We had to change in order to be an overcomer. And we, once we found out that we were overcomers, uh, then we didn't want to go back to the way we were. That, that was a low life that we had lived. It, it was a terrible life because we didn't have any trust in the Lord and we didn't have any faith. And, and we didn't, once we, once the Lord dealt with us and, and uh, caused us to, to rise up in him, then we didn't want to go back to the way we had been. We had a, a new daughter, a, a new lease on life. And so we wanted to go on with the Lord and we've continued. We haven't stopped. We're continuing to press on. But I want you to see that as a process. The process was that we were changed. We were changed. We were faced with a problem. The problem was the doctor said she was going to die. We were faced with a problem and we had to be changed. That's what an overcomer recognizes that as an overcomer, you're the one that has to be changed. That's your number one priority to be like Jesus. Amen. And if Paul could say, I haven't arrived yet, then I believe that applies to all of us. We haven't arrived yet. We're not like Jesus. But being like Jesus and growing closer and closer to Jesus is going to make us an overcomer. So any situation that you, uh, that you face, it may be you that needs to change. And so you get close to the Lord. You ask the Lord about it. What kind of promises apply in this situation? What, what do I need to know in this situation? I'm talking about when a problem comes, what do you do? Don't trust in the flesh. Don't run here. Don't run there. You know, one doctor, I mean, one king died because he sought to physicians yes, before he sought the Lord. He died. He, because he was looking to help from the doctors rather than looking for help from the Lord. And so let's not rely on, on flesh. Let's get our attention and focus on the Lord. Realize that the greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. That's the reason you're an overcomer. That's the reason you can overcome every problem. 
And every problem carries with it some profit. You need to find out where the profit is that you can be changed because that's what God's priority for you is, is to change you so that you are just like Jesus operating here on the earth. Just like Jesus, we're going to have to change. If we're going to be just like Jesus, Amen. this is a pretty exciting message to me. We want to be just like Jesus. And to be an overcomer, we have to want that. We have to want that real bad, that we want to be just like Jesus. We're not satisfied where we are. Remember, the overcomer in you is not your flesh. And so we look at your identity. You have to see yourself as an overcomer. Every problem that comes your way, you look for, how can I change? How can I? And when you change, then you can step into that situation and change it. When you get your spirit changed, uh, because you're, you have trusted in the Lord, not that you've trusted in your flesh, then you will be able to take charge of your circumstance. See, if you realize you are in Christ, and that's that's where you are, that's where you abide, that's where you that's where you live, that's where you hang your hat, you abide uh, in the Lord, then you can ask what you will, and it shall be done, and you can change your situation. Hello, Diamond. It's important. Change the problem. Take charge of every situation. A pro, a, an overcomer, see, is confident that within the overcomer is the power to overcome that problem. Mm -hmm. It's the power mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit that is within. Oh, and if yeah. you look to the power within you, you will overcome the world around you. Do it every time. Don't, sat it, don't be satisfied with nine victories out of ten. Don't be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Be confident that God has more in you, more invested in you, and more power in you than the problems that you face. Now, mm -hmm. let's say you've got a you've had a problem, and you've had a problem that keeps coming around and around and around. I, I think about some examples like I had a, a niece that uh, she'd get into one relationship with an abusive man, and she'd get out of that, and then she'd get into uh, uh, an, an abusive, uh, another abusive situation over. Why do the same problems come around and around? Because you haven't learned how to overcome them. You, you, there's still something you need to learn in, in those situations. Uh, the situations don't teach you anything. It's the Holy Spirit that teaches you. Uh, but if you've got the problems mm -hmm. that come around over and over again, you haven't learned the lesson you need to learn. Jesus said, come to me and I will give you rest and you will learn of me. Uh, maybe, maybe you don't have enough money to make it to the end of each month. If that happens over and over and over again, well, you've got to learn how to overcome that. And, and where will you learn? It's not to go out and get another job. It, it's not about... Uh, going out and, and doing all of this and doing all of that because that's relying on flesh. This is running into the one that's within you, looking to the Holy Spirit, looking inside of you, stepping out of your problem, looking inside of you, mm -hmm. spending time with the Lord, come to rest. And if you're at a point where you've got a stress increasing in your life, it's time as an overcomer to get more rest and get more peace, mm -hmm. turn to rest and peace because an overcomer, see, it is not going to let power, let problems overpower mm -hmm. them. I don't care whether it's peace or whether it's pressure or, or anxiety or whatever it is. If you are an overcomer, and let me tell you, if your spirit is born of God, mm -hmm. your spirit is an overcomer. And, and don't put wraps on your spirit and say, oh, no, you just have to be beaten down. You, your spirit is an overcomer because it's born of God. Whoever is born of God is an overcomer, overcomes the world. And this is the victory that 
overcomes the world, it's our faith. So mm -hmm. I, want to, I want you to know that every person here, you are an overcomer. Have confidence in the Lord that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. And what is the good work in you that God is doing? He's making you like Jesus. Jesus. He's giving you one opportunity after another to learn how to overcome problems. You overcome problems out of your identity, not out of the circumstances. Make your choices out of your identity. Your identity is that you are an overcomer in Jesus Christ, and you are being made into his image. You're being made just like Jesus, and, and don't put up with problems. Uh, be in Jesus. Run into Jesus, and, and then carry your problems in to Jesus, and then they'll be in him, and you come out of spending time with him, and you'll know how to overcome every problem. Mm. You're an overcomer of every problem, and if it keeps coming around, you just haven't found the solution. God has the solution for every problem, and his solutions are spiritual solutions. He has strategies mm. to overcome every problem, and they are spiritual strategies. Yeah. And for example, if you may need forgiveness, uh, you need to forgive somebody. That's a spiritual strategy. It may be that you, uh, you, you need to pray for somebody. It, needs, it may be that you need to bless somebody. Uh, look for spiritual strategies to overcome your problems. Don't just think about, well, if I do something in the natural, see, then you're relying on flesh. We have no confidence in flesh. Put your confidence mm -hmm. in the Lord. Run to him. He's inside of you. He will never leave you. He will never uh, forsake you. Remember that he's there. And that is that is the force. That's the power force that makes you the overcomer that you are. You are an overcomer and, and you know how to overcome by the identity that he has given you. He has made you an overcomer because you have been born of God. Your spirit man is born of God and he is the overcomer and he will overcome every problem you face. Hallelujah. Thank you.